you guys, it's Casey for Innovative Sugarworks, and today I'm going to show you how to make a gum paste dahlia using my new cutter set. Um, dahlias are one of my favorite sugar flowers to make just because I think they have so much dimension, they look great in your face. They do take some time and they are a lot of petals, but hopefully with this set uh, I'm going to show you guys some time-saving measures so they won't be such a hassle but will still look amazing. So let's get started. So to start off, we want to have our sugar paste, and you want to roll it out fairly thin, down to a millimeter. We're going to do our interior petals first, just kind of building the base, because dahlias have that nice, like, really densely petaled center. We're going to use some sneaky chips to get it that way. And so using the star-shaped cutters, Thank you. You want to do two of each. And especially when you get into really detailed cutters like these, I always like to cut them on a self-healing mat because it gives you a cleaner cut. So the worst thing is you cut a bunch of things and then you can't get them off. It's annoying. And if you're worried about things drying out or if you're making a bunch of dahlias, I will just keep them on my board with some uh, cling film over them and a wet cloth will keep them from drying out too quickly. And so then whatever side I cut, I want to flip it to the other side. I just think it, this is a little thing that I think looks nicer. And then I'm just going to use a ball tool to pull those petals out and elongate them and it also kind of cups them. But we're going to really cut them, so kind of pull and elongate and then pull back to kind of curl them forward a little bit. This will give the illusion of air in the petals even as we attach them. See, I don't have like a perfectly clean edge. That's okay with these, because this is just kind of, I call this base layer. Base layer needs lots of petals, but you're not really gonna see as much of this later. They don't have to be perfect. And a fun speed trick with dahlias especially, um, dahlias and peonies, anything that's got multiple petals, is do the same layer on every flower you're doing. So if you're doing, for some reason, you hate yourself and you're making 30 dahlias, do the first two petals on all 30 and then do the next one. It actually saves you some time by cutting the same petal over and over again and doing the same step over and over again. Less thinking. So then I'm going to grab, I use these little pre-made rose cones that you can get from Caljava. This is the extra small size and they're just uh, edible foam. You can also make them yourself, but you want them, um, as you can see, about half an inch, if not even a little bit smaller. Go ahead and coat the whole thing with gum glue. And then grab one of your smaller petals. Slide it up. And you want to pull it. That's why I like to use lots of glue, because you, you can actually break the petal a little bit and pull them just to make sure they meet up at the top. You see, it's totally okay to actually break the petals off a little bit so that they meet up at the top. So you see, I'm just kind of supporting and rolling it up. I'm actually mostly just stretching the gum paste. You're not completely breaking them off, but sometimes they will come off and it's okay. So you get layer one. And then go ahead for the next layer. You just want to paint your gum glue on. 
and you're repeating the process. I always go pretty heavy with my glue at this stage because I want to be able to slide them up if need be. And you want them to go on the cross of where your less, less layer was. So make sure you're kind of going on the overlap where there's a seam. Come on, little guy. Thank you. And if you yell at the petals, they tend to do what you want. So you constantly hear me yelling at sugar flowers. So just like that, just trying to get that nice kind of like intense petal base layer. And then we'll go to the next layer. These you shouldn't have to stretch as much. It all depends about the size of your cone when you start. I'm super lazy and I like to buy pre-made cones. <laughs> if I sat down and thought about it and I made my own cones, they would, they wouldn't have to stretch them out. But then this one, you can stretch them lightly, but you really only want to attach them at the base. There's, there's gum glue up the entire petal, but you want it to kind of just sit lightly. So you see I'm really only pushing here and then I'm just letting it kind of have that, that air in that space. If one of them is not sticking enough for you, just tap that top, but you want it to start to look kind of bulbous. And then doing the last one. And once again, kind of setting it so that it's on the seams. Just like so. And then I usually will hang these upside down to dry just in case the petals are trying to pull off a little bit. So just kind of hang that upside down to dry while you get your next batch of petals ready. So I've rolled out another piece of sugar paste, once again, to about a millimeter, and I'm gonna use the smallest petal cutter to cut out 12 to 15 petals. I usually, 12 is usually my happy number, but sometimes I'll cut the extra three just in case. 12 is normally the good place to go. And And then pop all these off. And this is once again where you might want to have, um, have something to cover them with so they don't dry out while you're working. So I've got my petals that I've cut out and I'm gonna very lightly tool them, just kind of running them to start the curl that I want. So just kind of from bottom to top a few times. And then you wanna grab a skewer and you actually wanna curl these. Dahlias, um, a lot of times the petals actually have this space and this air between them and so I do that now. So I'm taking my skewer, I'm gonna lay it here, and kind of working in a little bit of a semicircle is what I call it. You're just kind of wrapping them around that skewer, and put them off so you've got that air in there. And then I'm actually gonna flatten the bottom with my finger so it will attach seamlessly. So if you can see from all angles what it did, and we're gonna do it again. And you can change where you roll them around your, your skewer to get more open petals or more closed petals. So the higher up you go, the more open they'll be. And if you want one that's like completely closed, just rope. They're like, it's like making little cannolis. And so then you wanna do that for all 12 of your petals and then get some gum glue just on the bottom. Like that. Grab your base. 
And you just want to start attaching them. You don't want to go too much higher than the petals you already have. So you can kind of bend them into shape if you need more glue to hold it on. But you want them to start to open at this point. So you can kind of glue a few of them down. And it's once again just staggering them all the way around. Let some open up, let some be more closed. And then you wanna hang this upside down to let it, while it's drying between the layers. And if you see like some of your base layer might start to pop out, that's good, you want that. You want it to kind of look like it's slowly opening, not, the biggest thing with dahlias is don't make them too uniform. If you get them to where they're too perfect, even though some of them in nature are that perfect, they look weird when you do them like that in sugar. You want. All right, so we're moving up from our smallest petal to our next largest size. This is gonna be, the second of the five cutters. And we're just repeating what we've done on the previous layer. So you wanna cut out 12 petals, ball tool them and roll them up, just like we did the previous layer. And then you're also gonna attach them just like you did the previous layer. So it's kind of like for, for this one, repeat for the first two petals. So the smallest and the second, and the second size up are done the same way. So just to show again, I'm gonna kind of elongate it with your tool and then wrap it around your skewer. You'll notice that this one is easier to wrap because you've got more petal space. And then you can open it up. And then just start to attach them the same way, kind of once again, staggering around, kind of going up as you go out the layer. You don't want them to be the same size. You want them to actually go like lowest to highest, like that. And then when we get the next layer, it'll start to go back down. So I'm gonna add all those petals too. All right. So there's our Dahlia with our first two layers put on. That's using the smallest and the next size up. From here on out, all of the petals are going to be wired. So that's kind of our, our unwired section, as you can see right there. So what you'll need for the wired petals is 28 gauge wire cut into thirds. And then of course your gun paste and a cell board. So we're about to start rolling in wire and some petals. Hang on. Yep. All right, so I rolled my gun paste out onto my cell board. You wanna be sure that you can see the veins. That's kind of a good gauge of thickness because you want these to be very thin. Uh, dahlias have paper thin petals and we can't get them that thin with gun paste, but that's, what you're looking for is you can see the little kind of like the veins going through. Let's go ahead and pull that guy off. And then we're moving on to our third size. And you want to have the vein go about halfway up the petal. So when I'm gauging where to cut, you'll see about halfway. If you're a little more, a little less, you're okay. And you're going to want to cut I cut 15 of each. I don't always use all of them, but I see it as kind of like cut 15, you'll get one Dahlia free by the end of it, especially if you're doing a group. Cause you'll, I, it's, it's every Dahlia kind of speaks to you and tells you how many petals it needs. And sometimes you need like a 13th petal and it's really annoying to have to roll out an extra petal when you just need one. So make extras. Also stuff breaks, make extras. So from here you want to use 28 gauge wire that you wanna cut into thirds. I always use thirds because I like to have a nice long stem to my flower. Some people are like, do quarters. I do quarters and then I can't actually do anything with my flower because the stem's too short. I have to tape like a skewer to it or something. But yeah, so cut your wire into thirds. Already done with you. And then go ahead and I like to hold my petal between my middle finger and my thumb so I can feel the wire as it's going in, because you want to try to keep it as close to the middle as you want. And I go all the way to the end. So that's where my wire is ending right now. If you can see, it's all the way here. And that just ensures that the petals will be strong and you can bend them as you need them to. So just another example. Into your gum glue, hold it between your thumb and middle finger, and just scotch that wire down. And by having it between two fingers, you can feel where it is and you won't puncture the side of your petal. 
And I think it took me like four years to get really good at this. <laughs> oh. And if you bend your wire like that, just use the other side. I'm a bull in a china shop. I, I'm too strong for weak wire. So just like that. And if you feel it starting to go outside of the vein, just pull back a little bit and then shove it in the right spot where you want it to. So from here, this is actually a peony veiner. It's the one I like. Lovely little peony veiner. I'm gonna vein it first. You can vein it vein up or vein down. It doesn't really matter with this press because they're the same on both sides. But you wanna get a nice, good indentation like that. And then we're going to vein it. I'm moving down to my smaller tool. You want to vein from the bottom side. So the side that has that indentation where we put the wire, that's the side you want to um, emboss from and, and uh, thin out. And I always go from the base to the tip because I, if I want to curl it more, I'll pull back here. But if I go like this, it tends to get my, my pedal out of shape. So base to tip, you wanna get a nice curl on it. You can vary your pressure. And then if you wanna curl the pedal back at all, just go like that. And so then you're gonna flip it, fold it in half, like such. And then I'll actually, just kinda of like what we did for the other pedals, I'll roll the, sorry, I'll roll the bottom just a little bit like there, so you get that cupped shape from the pedal. And then just right at the bottom, just kind of curl it so it's nice and nice and tight. And then I'm gonna use my thumb. I'm gonna turn it over so that the, the spine is up on my thumb and I'm just gonna barely bend the wire like that so it cups. And to hold that shape while it dries, I grab plastic soup spoons. I just go to my local grocery store and I steal these because I'm a bad person. Um, but you can find them at restaurant supply shops as well, but these are my favorite ones and I've never found them at a restaurant supply store. So I just, it's kind of like how I steal straws from Starbucks. Same thing. Starbucks is gonna find me. But you wanna place it into the base of the spoon. So it's kind of curling back just a little bit, but it's supporting, let me see if I can get you guys so you can see how it's just supporting and following the, the neck of the spoon. That way the petals will cup up and because um, a lot of times dahlias seem to get really long really fast, I want them to stay nice and tight. And then you'll just repeat that for all these petals. And then it's the same process as you go up. I, for most of my dahlias that I'm using in arrangements, I only go up to the fourth, um, the fourth largest petal. I don't use the fifth one very much. If I'm doing one single statement dahlia where I want like a dinner plate dahlia, I will use this, but when you go into this petal, the dahlia is seriously gonna be about the size of this petal pad. They can get really, really big. Um, so I usually stop with here, but go ahead and if you're gonna do them, 15 of these three sizes, wired and tooled and rolled just the same way if I've shown you, and then let them dry. I like to let them dry probably for two or three hours. I don't want them completely hard when I assemble them because they are really fragile and they'll break but I want them to totally hold their shape. So do those guys, lots and lots of petals. Go. All right, so we've got all of our petals made and so I'm starting with our third largest cutter. And what I've done is I've separated them into three piles of five, kind of based on how open the petals are. So you can kind of see, it's just me, like I think that's the tightest close, that's the most open, this is a third one. So that's, that's just how I'm separating them into petals of five. We're gonna start with the middle, so not the most closed, but the second most closed. And we'll grab our base. And you just wanna bend right at the base of the petal. But you don't have to go right up tight because if you see if I if I pull it here and try to get it tight like that how open the pedal is I want to leave it a little loose so that it sits up higher it's okay to do this because by the time I get the last layer of petals you won't even see that I did this 
And it's kind of like putting a jigsaw puzzle together. So you'll see I'll kind of wiggle it to get it in place. And then you're like, okay, there's a hole. Look for the holes. Get in there. Thank you. And then tape it around. Kind of going in a star pattern. You can always pull them up at this point. If you feel like they're not sitting right, just pull the wires a little bit. You can have them low, you can have them high. Remember, you don't want them to be all exact and perfect. And right there's a hole. Find the hole. And then once you finish a layer of five, you want to tape up all the way down. So you want to set the wires. So if you try to add 15, just tape around A, you'll get like a really big section here that makes it difficult to add them in. And they'll keep moving on you and they won't stay in their home and you want them to stay in their home. So then from here, I'll go to the widest petals. And same thing, add them in. And it's okay if you have them kind of like going in like how I put this one, it's, it's angled, that's fine. Cause that's, once again, it's different. Different is good. Like such. And so then I'm gonna go to the ones that were the most closed because I'm actually gonna kind of thread them in there to get a tighter layer. I know that just didn't make any sense, but I'm gonna show you what I mean. So instead of taking these petals and adding them this way, I'm actually going to thread them in like that, kind of where I see a hole, like right there. Not bending the wire, I'm just placing them in straight down because when you do it like that, they sit slightly differently. So you see how it got in a little bit tighter? And that's just for some reason how the previous petals support it. And I like, and that's also a way that you can keep it from not getting so like low and wide is just kind of threading, threading a couple of petals in. So we're gonna do one right here. So once again, if you can see from, from this angle, I'm just taking it in like right along the base of the petals. The wire pops out there. And you're just kind of pushing it in like that. It just gives them like, I think a nice, a nice appearance. All right, so I've started my last layer. Once again, this is using the fourth um, largest cutter. So you can see, like, I've got giant monster hands, even with just the fourth cutter, how big these flowers get. So I've put the first layer of five on. Now I'm going for my second layer of five. And so it's once again, at this stage, you might not even use all 15 of your petals because you're really just kind of looking for where, where the holes are and trying to keep it in a, in a round shape. You don't want to end with like an ovular dahlia. So what I'm doing is I'm always looking, I'm like, okay, I need a petal here or actually there first. Because you might get to a point where you're like, oh, I've only used 10 or 13 or 12 petals and it looks good. That's, it's okay to stop and have extras. Like I said, you cut 15 and you usually end up with a few extras and then you just have enough for later, for another dahlia. And you can see because I've got that thin wire, I'm still using the 28 gauge wire, I can really manipulate and move my petals around. Okay. 
so right there. And so once again, every five petals, be sure you tape them all the way down just so that they stay. It's not a security thing. It's more, it just makes your life easier because you're not dealing with petals running around on you. And so then you can kind of take a look. See, I'm actually pretty okay with that. I could actually stop there. I might play with and adding a few. So with this one, once again, you can do the, the threading between the petals try and get them at a slightly different length. It doesn't thread the same way. The farther out you get, it will it will um, thread less. But you can kind of keep like, say, do I like it, do I not? I actually think I'm okay with just that. But that's where it's kind of like dahlias and peonies. You have a little bit of like choose your own adventure of adding as many petals as you want. But I'm pretty happy with that and I think it looks good. So there is our sugar dahlia. And you can see from the side how it's still pretty narrow it's not low down here you really only want it to be an inch inch and a half in depth from the side otherwise they just get too long if you ever wanted one that was more full and more like a pom-pom like they've got those dahlias that are completely round you can just start to bend the petals back as you go but i tend to stick with those because that's that's a nice dahlia that doesn't um, make you want to go insane while you're making it so i hope you guys enjoyed this thanks for tuning in and go make some dahlias